He hello, it's Briggs here, and like always, welcome back to All Day Anime. And in today's video, I will be ranking the Straw Hat Pirates from weakest to strongest. One Piece has been my favorite manga for over a decade now, and I'm so excited to finally start making content on it. That being said, I want to make it clear how I'm making this list. I will be basing it off of all the possible factors that would make someone strong in battle. So things like hockey, devil fruits, abilities, techniques, intelligence, and even personality. And just a reminder, I am not facing them off against each other, but rather basing it on the characteristics I previously mentioned. But without any more delay, let's begin at number 10 with the weakest straw hat in my opinion, Nami. Nami is a very agile fighter and has definitely proved herself post time skip to be competent in battle, especially with her new and improved climb attack that has extremely powerful lightning attacks capable of destroying entire ships along with doing damage to people inside. On top of that, she can now use it to turn herself completely invisible. That will help her to sneak up on opponents, which can be very effective in battle. All that being said, even though she has proved herself to be a strong fighter post time skip, I think it is pretty obvious that she is still weaker than the rest of the Straw Hats and it seems the world government even agrees, giving her the smallest bounty out of the bunch. Well, other than Chopper, which is just an ongoing gag at this point. But anyway, as I go into the next character, it will become apparent as to why she is weaker. God Usopp at number 9, who, as of the Dress Rosa arc, has awakened his observation hockey. Now, he hasn't exactly mastered it, but this definitely takes his fighting ability to the next level and gives him a lot of potential going forward. That being said, observation hockey alone, in my opinion, puts Usopp above Nami, but on top of that, he's a tactician in battle, allowing him to defeat opponents much stronger than him. A prime example being the Fishman from way back in the Arlong arc. I recently rewatched the arc, so it's freshly in my mind, but with Usopp's current strength, he honestly had no business defeating one of Arlong's top fighters, but there is so much more to a fight than brute force, and time and time again Usopp proves this to be true. Same thing happened in Alabasta when he exploited Mr. Four and his partner's teamwork, along with deceiving Perona during Thriller Bark. So I think it goes without saying that he is stronger than Nami, and I'm sure as time passes he will become even stronger and higher on this list, especially with the potential observation hockey brings to the table. But anyway, at number 8 we have Robin, and you're probably surprised that she is this low on the list, especially with her introduction. I personally thought her Devil Fruit was ridiculously powerful, but sadly we haven't really seen much of an improvement. She can pretty much take out any mid-tier fighter, and her Devil Fruit is quick and perfect for assassinations. The problem arises when she tries to take on someone who is very physically strong, like you ain't gonna overpower someone like Zoro or Frankie for that matter. And once she fails at trying to snap their neck or back, I think it's GG in a fight. And because of her OP Devil Fruit, we haven't really seen her abilities in hand-to-hand -hand combat. She usually one-shots people or outsmarts them, which is why I think she could take out any mid-tier opponent, but when fighting someone who is very physically strong, I don't really think she has much of a chance. But just because her Devil Fruit is so powerful, I had to put her above Nami and Usopp, as I think she could probably one-shot both of them. But I can see Usopp surpassing her on the list pretty fast. Next up at number 7 we have Brook. Brook is pretty similar to Robin, where we haven't really seen too much improvement since the initial introduction. Though the thing that always stood out to me is his speed. He is so fast and lightweight that he can run on water, and his attacks are so fast that his opponents don't even know that they have been cut. A prime example being when he took out the steroid-powered Zeo with little to no effort. This shows that he's probably one of the fastest straw hats. Pair that with his master sword play, I think he's a notch stronger and more powerful than Robin, and can likely defeat stronger opponents. On top of everything I mentioned, being just bones definitely helps since he can't really suffer from blood loss and has been able to survive being decapitated. On top of that, his musical ability has been shown to put people to sleep and influence people by altering their emotional state. I always find it hard to rank these sort of characters as a lot of their fights seem to be for comedic effect, but overall I'm confident with my lift so far, though Robin and Brooke are definitely very close. Feel free to let me know what you think down below. But anyway, next up on the list is Frankie at number 6. I think the main reason I have him higher on the list than everyone I previously mentioned has to do with his durability. The dude is a fucking tank. He has been shown to shrug off firearms, artillery, and even a landmine. He even managed to survive an attack from Ors, a giant zombie with insane physical strength. And a lot of this was pre-time skip before he fully enhanced his body. At this point, it would take a lot to knock this guy out, much more than anyone else I previously mentioned, giving him a chance against stronger foes. And with a huge and heavy metal body comes a certain level of physical strength that he can use to overpower mid-tier opponents with ease, especially when their attacks most likely have no effect. He has also been seen to shoot out powerful bursts of air, shoot rockets, and even breathe fire. With his recent fight against Senior Pink, who is an awesome character by the way, he in my opinion earned this spot on the list. But anyway, at number 5 we have Chopper, and I'm sure some of you may be surprised with his placement being this high on the list, but I think he has earned it and here's why. I think the main reason I have him so high is that post time skip he can actually control monster point. But even overlooking that, I think he's a very underrated character. 
His Devil Fruit, I believe, has about 8 different transformations at this point. He can choose which transformation will work best and alter depending on the situation he is in. Plus, he somehow has the ability to find his opponent's weaknesses, which in combination with his variety of transformations has a large amount of potential. He definitely isn't lacking in physical strength either when he has Heavy Point and his new Horn Point. Plus, he has been shown to be very competent in hand-to-hand -hand combat when using Kung Fu Point. And if he's in a pinch, Guard Point is an amazing defensive ability, strong enough to protect him from Big Mom. All that, and now he can even control Monster Point, I think it's a no-brainer that he is stronger than everyone else I previously mentioned. Now, the next two individuals on the list I want to discuss at the same time, just so you fully understand my logic. But I'm actually going to play Sanji at number 4, and Jinbei at number 3. Although, I think they are very close in strength. They can both use Armament Hockey, meaning they can take on Logias and have a solid defense. Jinbei was actually on par with Ace prior to him joining Wiper's crew, as they both nearly killed each other during a 5 day long battle. Sanji can basically fly through the use of Skywalk, so he has an aerial advantage, while Jinbei being a fishman has an advantage in or near any body of water. They both have a high combat class, along with Diablo Jambe, where he can engulf his legs in fire, which is so hot and powerful that it can remain lit underwater. While Jinbei is a master of fishman karate and can control water at will. They are so close in strength, it is honestly hard for me to make a decision, but Sanji also has observation hockey, which gives him an edge over Jinbei, who sadly we don't know for sure if he has observation hockey, though I do think that he likely does have it. But I cannot make that assumption as we don't know for sure. Although observation Observation Hockey gives Sanji an edge and makes me want to put him higher, Jinbei is a fishman and a master of fishman karate. This makes him super powerful against Devil Fruit users and really any battle near or on a body of water, which considering they are pirates happens a lot. Plus Sanji is pretty much useless against half the population since he doesn't fight women. And like I said before, I'm pretty confident Jinbei also possesses some level of observation hockey. That being said, it is definitely a close one in my eyes and I would love to hear your thoughts down below, but as for now, I'm putting Sanji at number 4 and Jinbei at number 3. And for the next one, I'm gonna let my friend and patron, Starry Nick, take it away. Keep in mind, Nick isn't a YouTuber, he's a patron, so please bear with his audio. Hey guys, I'm Nick one of Briggs's loyal Patreon supporters and moderators. And at number two, we have Zoro. I honestly think this one is pretty straightforward. We barely get to see it post time skip and I still think this spot is guaranteed. He can use both arm and observation hockey just like Sanji. We get to see him slice up Horty underwater and he also is able to cleanly slice Pika's gigantic stone statue with hockey infused sword strikes. The combination of his master sword play and his use of hockey puts him above everyone else on the list. I think Zoro easily earns a spot on the list, and with Wano coming up, I don't have any doubts in my mind that he will earn the spot even more. Zanji and Jinbei have a lot to work to do in order to steal the spot from Zoro. And last, but definitely not least, Luffy at number 1. And I honestly think it goes without saying, Luffy is extremely competent in all three forms of hockey at this point in the story. He recently defeated Doflamingo, and I honestly believe that both him and Luffy are very close, if not Admiral level at this point. Especially with Luffy's Gear 4, I don't think there's going to be anyone who disagrees with me putting him at number 1. Maybe Zoro will prove himself in Wano and make it a closer match, but Luffy being the captain will likely always be the strongest. And like I previously mentioned, based on his track record of opponents, plus his use of all three forms of hockey and his devil fruit, I'm going to have to place him at number 1. And that is the end of this video. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I love One Piece. It's my favorite manga. So if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to share it with your friends, smash that like button. Seeing my face right now, you're probably expecting a hashtag Briggs Q, though I don't really have any Briggs Qs that are One Piece related, or very few, so if you want to leave some hashtag Briggs Qs that are One Piece related, I'll answer them in my next One Piece related video. On that note, I want to give a huge, gigantic thank you to Starry Nick for joining me on this video and supporting me on Patreon. All the links are down below, whether it's Patreon, Discord, Twitch, Twitter, merch, everything, all of it, it's all down below. Again, thank you so much for making it to this point in the video. Share with friends, smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell to never miss a video. And just like that, I will see you guys all next time, dudes. Shinpaku. Shinpaku. Subscribe. Shinpaku, boy.